Hello, welcome back to the TechMaki channel. Today we're going to continue the creation of our first back-end service, the product service. We're going to focus on the creation of the first APIs of this service. But before we go, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell in order to receive information as soon as I publish my new videos. And if you have already done so, share this content with your friends and colleagues so you can help me spread this free content. Cool. So let's open the weather forecast controller and create a new class, public class. And we're going to define the first very important resource that we have inside of a menu, which is the catalog of products. So let's call it product controller. This product controller is going to inherit from controller base. All right, now two important things. First is we need to define what is the route that is going to be used, right? To map the URL and this product controller. So let's use the same thing as was defined in the weather forecast controller. With, let's define the decoration route. And inside of this route decoration, let's specify controller. Cool. So this means that the controller name is the URL that you're going to specify on your browser to reach out to this product controller, okay? Second thing, and this is there is a little bit of history over here in this second parameter that we're going to specify. Actually, it's not a parameter, sorry, it's a decoration. So let's decorate with API controller. What is this actually? API controller is one specific implementation that allows you to actually define very clear REST resources, like following this convention with the controller name as being that resource. And the API controller allows you to do HTTP GET, HTTP POST, PUT, following very clearly the REST style, right? And the reason you need to specify this and decorate this in your controller is because all this implementation of these routes and everything comes from the .NET, in, in this case, ASP.NET Core, .MVC. MVC is a little bit different from REST services. It is actually following the model view controller pattern. When you enter in a certain URL using very similar routing system, but it's not REST, you can receive as a response. First, you execute a controller, and then this controller inside of these actions can give you a view, right? Which is basically a HTML that is going to be rendered for you. This is different from what we are trying to do here, because we are trying to do clean and simple HTTP REST APIs. This is completely different from returning an HTML or something like this. In our case, we're going to actually return JSON content, backend data information that is going to be consumed by our front end. So this is why we need to specify here API controller. Okay. So now let's create our first method. Our first method is going to be public I action result. And then you can say, what, what is that, right? What is this I action result? This is the interface that contains the multiple HTTP responses following the standards of the regular HTTP status codes that we can return when we are resolving a certain API call, right? So you're going to call the API, pass the resource, use the HTTP verb, and we are going to return for you a response that it contains the HTTP code and also the content and it's going to be inheriting or it's going to be following the interface of I action result. Okay, so let's call the method, for example, get. And here we are going to receive a product ID. Okay, that's fine. Uh, there are some things missing here in terms of decoration. So we need to make this method accessible via an HTTP verb. And what is going to be this HTTP verb? It's going to be HTTP get. So we specify HTTP GET, so it means that every time you submit to a URL that's going to be product, and you specify that you are using the GET, it is going to basically come to this code over here. Okay. So uh, in this case, let's do a very simple implementation. I'm going to return just a product for everything. It's going to be always the same product because I just want to see how my API works in the browser. Okay. To do this. Let's do the following. Let's create a var here that contains my product. And I'm going to do new product. 
and my new product is going to be a class that contains all the properties that we created for our product and the properties are the ones that we define it in the class diagram okay so let's take a look at the class diagram a little bit back again and see what are the information that we provided there okay i brought actually the classes.puml to uh this the visual studio instance right the visual studio code instance and here we can see the product class instead of this product class you have the product id the name the price the tag and image path so let's take all of this information and let's basically return uh actually copy and paste in the in the controller that we are creating actually we're gonna paste it outside so let's create public class product and this is something important that I'm going to show in the next video, which is I'm going to specify here this class with a name, which is a little bit different. And I'm going to explain in the next video why it's going to be product to get right. I'm trying to be a little bit explicit here for now. What you need to use as a reference is that this is the data structure that I want to return whenever someone tries to get a product. So here is the definition of this class. I'm going to paste this data here and let's just of course format that because this is not right so this one i'm going to change i'm going to explain also in the next video why i'm changing that to string but i'm going to actually use a string string product id let's do a very simple get set let's do uh, it's public let's do now for the name public string name let's do also public decimal price right let's do public decimal tax and finally public string image path cool so now let's just remove this and here we got our product to get class this is the class that is going to return here is a result of our get okay so let's define i'm going to define a sample data so our product id is going to be a guid dot new guid dot to string okay so i'm going to make it a string the second one is going to be the name let's name it uh master sushi right then let's put the price as 10 dollars 10 and 10 cents let's put the tax as 20 cents and finally the image path is going to be emg dot master sushi dot png okay so this is just me defining a sample product and i'm going to return this sample product s return this is going to be an okay response right because we are returning the 200 we are saying that we are going to return successfully a product so let's put okay and then i'm going to return this product okay so this is pretty much how you return a response and then you specify the product okay so let's just stop this .NET watch over here let's see i'm gonna do a .NET build to see if it compiles let's see if there is any problem Okay, there is an error here. There is a literal problem. Uh, so, GUID. Uh, maybe this is not implemented or available here. Oh, okay, it's a method. So, new GUID is basically a method. So, let's put the parenthesis, right? The double parenthesis here. And now I think it's going to work. .NET build. Let's see. There's another problem. So there is a literal of type double cannot be ex implicitly converted to type decimal. Oh, that's basically here. We need to specify the letter M, I think. Okay. The error messages are always your friend, right? Okay, so let's go again. .NET build. Let's see now. All right, no, it's working. So .NET watch run. Here we go. Let's see if we actually have a controller let's just go to product here we go and then we do have a product right that's exactly what we were looking for you put the resource name in your url and then it provides you the response 
of that product that you're looking for, right? In this case, I haven't specified the ID, right? So it doesn't matter what is the ID that I specify, but how to send this ID and this ID be part of our response as well. So I'm going to do just to demonstrate specifying, for example, the product ID, whatever I specify over here at this moment is not going to affect because we haven't implemented the process that takes the product ID and do something with this, right? So let's do it right now. So I'm getting back to the Visual Studio code here now, and let's make it respond uh, based on what we specify as a product ID. Okay, so let's go here. And uh, when we receive the product ID, we are going to make it part of our product to get still no logic related to it right we are actually not finding the product in a catalog because we don't even have a catalog for now so let's just uh, put the, the the information over here to see how the query string is received when we do the http get and then it's added to our response okay okay so here we have whatever we put here as the product id is going to return as the product id of our implementation Okay, so another thing that is very useful and that we can use to declare here as a decoration of this method is another decorator, which is produce response type, right? So we specify here and basically we have a list of status codes and the list of status codes contains all the status codes that we can use. So there is a status code that is the 200 status 200 okay cool so then we are being a little bit more explicit right in terms of uh, what we are going to provide as http status codes for this api this is going to be very important as soon as we add an automatically generated user interface on top of these apis and the good thing about it is that it makes it very easy for us to test and validate all the apis that we create by having a user interface available for us. As soon as we get to the post, for example, or we get to put, for example, which are other verbs, you cannot easily do that just using a browser and typing the URL. You could have actually a user interface that we, as an API project, we could provide that to our user to make it simple for testing and for checking our APIs, right? So this is what we are going to also do in the next video. In the next video, we are going to continue on the implementation of our controller and we are going to start implementing all the other APIs that we have available. And we are also going to start thinking about the data persistence. Thanks a lot for joining and I hope to see you again on the next video.